Welcome to the Centre for Anaesthesia podcast series. In this podcast, we'll be discussing hypoxia and how to treat it. After listening to this podcast, you should be able to recognise, monitor and treat a hypoxic patient. Hypoxia can be broadly defined as a lack of oxygen availability to tissues. There are some cells which are able to produce energy for a limited amount of time in the absence of oxygen via anaerobic metabolism. However, organs such as the heart and brain are extremely sensitive to a lack of oxygen. If the oxygen demands of these tissues are not met, then irreversible damage can occur within minutes. Early recognition and treatment of hypoxia by you can prevent the progression to irreversible organ damage. How to recognise hypoxia? In general, we tend to see acute hypoxia in our clinical practice. As the brain is exquisitely sensitive to a lack of oxygen, central nervous system signs are often the first indicator. This may start with confusion and can progress to unconsciousness and seizures. The patient may also complain of breathlessness and have an increased respiratory rate. If the hypoxia remains untreated, then the central respiratory centres can fail, causing a paradoxical fall in respiratory rate or even apnea. Central and peripheral cyanosis are often present. This can be very obvious in severe hypoxia. Fortunately, there is an easy way to objectively assess whether your patient is hypoxic. Pulse oximetry, or a SATS probe, is a non-invasive and quick test which measures the amount of oxygenated haemoglobin in arterial blood and displays it as a percentage. Normally, we use a finger probe, but it's worth remembering that sometimes you can get misleading values if the patient is moving or has poor peripheral perfusion. Probes that can be used on warm and well-perfused areas, for example, the ear or the nose, are also available and under certain circumstances may give a more accurate reading than the finger probe. Normal oxygen saturation in healthy patients is around 95% and above. In patients with chronic respiratory disorders, baseline oxygen saturation may be lower. Values of 90% may be normal in this group. Additionally, we can measure the partial pressure of oxygen in blood by taking a sample from an artery and running it through an arterial blood gas machine. You'll normally find at least one of these machines on the critical care unit of your hospital. In addition to oxygen, these machines commonly measure carbon dioxide, serum pH and serum bicarbonate, which gives further information about a patient's current metabolic and respiratory function. We refer to the partial pressure of oxygen as the PO2. Normally, this is between 11 and 13 kilopascals in healthy individuals. Treating hypoxia. Once you suspect or diagnose hypoxia, then your first action needs to be to give some supplemental oxygen. Initially, it's ideal if you can give this in high concentration. 15 litres of oxygen per minute through a non-rebreathed face mask is usually the best option. This will allow you time to make a further assessment of the patient, treat the underlying cause of the hypoxia, and call for senior advice. Sitting your patient upright may also help them to oxygenate by improving their respiratory volumes and lung mechanics. There are some groups of patients who you may not want to give prolonged high concentration oxygen therapy to. Some people with severe chronic obstructive airway disease depend on a degree of hypoxia to provide their drive to breathe. This is a very rare condition, so don't worry too much about this initially. Treat the hypoxia first and then titrate the oxygen concentration downwards until you reach their normal oxygen saturation. Which mask should I use? Some masks give oxygen at a fixed concentration, whereas others provide a variable concentration. Fixed performance devices include non-rebreathe masks with a reservoir bag and venturi masks. High flow oxygen via a non-rebreathe mask with a reservoir bag provides fixed concentrations of around 85% oxygen. Venturi devices also provide fixed concentrations of oxygen ranging from 24 to 60% oxygen depending on the device chosen. 
variable performance devices include nasal cannulae and a Hudson mask. These masks provide a concentration of oxygen that varies throughout the respiratory cycle. They are ideal for providing concentrations of oxygen up to approximately 35%. Nasal cannulae are often preferred by patients, although at higher oxygen flows they may cause drying of the nasal mucosa and epistaxis. Monitoring the response. When commencing your patient on oxygen therapy, it's useful to have continuous pulse oximetry. This will allow you to titrate the amount of oxygen you are giving according to the patient's blood oxygen saturation. Once stable, you may decide that it's appropriate to intermittently monitor the oxygen saturation, for example, once every two hours. If you are still struggling to oxygenate your patient despite starting higher concentrations of oxygen, then now would be a good time to seek urgent help from a senior colleague. Many hospitals have guidelines about when to seek further help and who to call. At UCLH, if a patient has oxygen saturations of below 90% and are on more than 35% oxygen, then a call to our critical care outreach team is triggered. In cases of severe respiratory failure, admission to the intensive care unit for non-invasive or invasive ventilation may be required. Thanks for downloading and listening to our podcasts. If you have any questions about what you've just heard, then please email us at centre.for.anesthesia.ucl at googlemail.com. You can also email us if you'd like to suggest a topic for a future podcast. We'd be delighted to hear from you. Please check our website at www.ucl.ac.uk forward slash anesthesia for further material.